Alrighty, so today we are going to look at the best signing for each of these Eastern Conference team in 2022. And keep in mind, these signings are signings that happened in the last offseason and also during the 2022 MLS season. That turns out to be a huge boon. And for some of these teams, it was pretty easy to pick which are the best signing because, you know, some of these teams probably didn't make a lot of signing in last season. But for some, it was kind of difficult in terms of choosing it. And that I'll let you guys know in the comments below if you agree or disagree in some of the names I put here on the board. But we start off with Atlanta United as we're going to go alphabetical order as always in the East. And it is going to be your reigning uh, newcomer of the year, Tiago Amada. And again, you know, whether the debate whether if he deserved the, the newcomer of the year is definitely up to, to how you... How you per proceed but you know cer certainly Thiago Amada I mean it's it's kind of interesting because uh when you look at the numbers that he put up it wasn't as as much as as you would say that it was worth like the record amount that Atlanta United of course got him and especially with the way that when Amada first came to Atlanta United it looked like it was going to be a bust because he couldn't really get going and that uh, again I, I think I've said this when I did the Atlanta United Moving Forward series episode, I feel like Amada kind of got better and better as the season goes along. And I think that is kind of typical for a, a young South American, or in this case, a young Argentine coming into a new country and a new league and are not familiar with. It's going to take time for them to, to settle in. But once he settle in, you can definitely see he has some great magic for Atlanta United. And there's even been sources have said that, that Atlanta has had a couple of European Club interest in terms of getting Amada, and that again, this if that 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 figure is going to be big, then this could be 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 similar to what we saw Miguel Almiro a couple of years ago when they sell him for big amount of money, and thus kind of begin this this philosophy that that pretty much spreads throughout the entire league. That you're gonna go go get these South American players, especially these young Argentine players, develop them, and eventually sell them off for a big profit. Now, we go to the Chicago Fire, and for the Fire, you know, I'm actually going to go with a defender. And I'm actually going to go with Raphael Shehos. Now, I know I could have easily gone with John Durant, and that I think John Durant ha had a really good season, especially during stretch where he, he looked like ev every bit as ever ties when Chicago decided to sign him but I'm gonna go with kind of an un underrated signing of signing that not many people feel believe that that it was a, as good as advertised and that's Raphael Shehos I mean when he came into the the scene it was kind of a very under the rare not a lot of people talked about it but when you saw some of the performance that he has has put in for the Chicago Fire especially in the beginning of the season I mean it's been incredible I mean there's a reason why the Fire for a long time this season has no to, to be a, a team that have have re regularly be, been one of the best defensive team in the league. And when we saw times that he ha has been unavailable for this fire team, uh, there w were problems in, in that back line. So, again, you know, I think this might surprise some people that pick Raphael Shehos, but I don't think a lot of people appreciate how, how big he's he's been, and especially he's been just an absolute rock and elite leader in that fire back line this season now uh we move on to charlotte fc and technically i should go with charlotte first because they technically go before for chicago i mean i know both starts with a c and an h but uh a obviously comes before i that is but nevertheless we go with charlotte fc and i'm gonna go with their goalkeeper and i gotta make sure i i of course uh, put the right right uh, spelling into it because it's not always easy and that, of course, is Christian Kalina. And again, you know, I could could have e easily gone with, with some of the attackers for the Shara team. I could have easily gone with Shwitetsky. I could have also even gone with, with Daniel Rios up front. But I'm going to go with their goalkeeper, Christian Kalina, because how many times this season we have seen K Kalina make some big save for the Shard FC team. And that, you know, this year, I feel, or last season, I feel like we have seen a, a lot of really good goal goalkeeper that kind of fly under the the radar and not not been mentioned as some of the best goalkeeper in the league and i think i think that kind of goes the same with kalina who you know we have seen him make some big save for for this this team and that you know if this short team was a little bit better i think he could have maybe even be in the conversation for goalkeeper of the year so yeah uh what a 
great job that is for Shard, of course, getting a decent goalkeeper uh, for these next couple of years. But now we go to FC Cincinnati. And for Cincinnati, you know, they they definitely made some, some good signings uh, during this season, but none of their than their DP uh, midfielder. And again, I got to make sure I got the spelling right on this. And that is Ob Obina uh, um, um, what though? Wabado, I think that's that's how you say. It. I got this still still have to try to pronounce it correctly. But yeah, this was kind of I would say in some way this was kind of a bit of a gamble for FC Cincinnati because you know usually when you spend your money on a designated player, you usually don't spend it on a number six unless you're absolutely sure that he he's going to be like a Diego Chara kind of type. And in some ways, that is exactly what FC Cincinnati got because Wabado has has been huge for this FC Cincinnati team, especially in the midfield and has been putting out out fires that we've seen before where you know part of the issue that the Cincinnati team uh has for the past couple of seasons is the the back line just be, being bad but also just their their midfield just kind of keep getting overrun but with them getting Wobodo he has re really been, been there to put out those fires and have have maintained that that midfield to not get overrun and not to mention also shield that that back line where sometimes that that Cincinnati back line which occasionally they do have their moments of be, being in and out of position at least Wobodo though there is there to cover it before it gets into to to a shaky back line that we've seen sometime with FC Cincinnati now uh moving on to DC United uh this is an easy one uh it's got to be Taxi Funtas I mean there shouldn't be a lot of discussion about this one because Taxi Funtas, when he came into the the league and in his first couple of games, he was was just absolute lights out. And that and that if it wasn't for for that that racial allegation, which you know it seems like that is now all clear cleared up, and that the good news for DC is that it seems like they were able to keep him for the future. But if it wasn't for that that, that racial allegation that he had uh, against Inter Miami, I think he would have had a good good shout of being newcomer of the year because he was on on fire when he came into the league was scoring goals at will and you know keep in mind you know it's one thing thing when a, a number nine can can kept, be in form and basically score a ton of goals but it's another to do it again in this dc team where you know this is a dc team that doesn't have a lot of uh, of good good players in terms of delivering service to their num number nine so the fact that taxi funtos has been able to to get that with limited ser service from from this attacking in midfield uh, or from this supporting cast it just shows you how how good he he is and that again for dc they are very fortunate that that racial in allegation incident seems like that nah, that is now clear clear off the books because it, again it would have been, been such a shame the fact that if if taxi funtas indeed did did um commit, commit or did find out there was evidence that he of course of course had that 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 racial slur used on Damian Lowe in that game against Inter Miami, uh, that would be be such a such a, a disappointing way to have have your best player and now you're not going to have him because of this. Uh, speaking of Inter Miami, uh, we're gonna go with another striker. We're gonna go with Leo Campana, and again there there was a lot uh, of decent decent si signings and you know what I'm also gonna kind of in some way in include so some of these super direct draft kind of player or players that they they got as a homegrown player because even though i know technically it's not really a really a signing uh when you pick guys in the super draft that's good and inter miami definitely hit a slam dunk in terms of some of these super or draft signing and i could have also easily gone with bryce duke and in in terms of one of the be best signings that they they had uh after he gone to to from lafc to inter miami though i don't think he actually qualified because i think he actually arrived with Inter Miami uh, last season, and in this criteria, it's last off season, and also uh, whatever signings that happened this season. But one signings that we definitely we saw in the off season last year for Inter Miami is Leo Campana, and early on it looked like it was going to be a bust. I mean, early on it, it, he he wasn't really, really doing doing very well, but then he just be, caught fire in the middle of the the season. Like he was just scoring goals at will and. And that if it if it wasn't for Gonzalo Higuain, kind of still still his position back of him also so started to be 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 in form. I think Neil Campana would have also be a guy that I can can say that he could could maybe have a run for newcomer of the year. And especially the fact that I think his form kind of dipped a little bit, but nevertheless, I still think he is by far 
part of the best signing for Inter Miami and a guy that is definitely going to be the future in that number nine spot for this team now that Gonzalo Higuain has officially retired. Uh, but now moving on to CF Montreal and you know for Montreal there, there was definitely a, a, a couple of players that you could have a good shout but I mean it's pretty obvious that I have to go with Alistair Johnston who's no longer with this team but you know, when they, of course, signed him uh, from Nashville, I see. I mean, I'll tell you what, Montreal has re really hit, hit it out of the park in terms of so some of these big blockbuster moves that they, they have made uh, within the league. I mean, I remember when they decided to get Georgie Mihajevic and how they spent like a million dollar general allocation money to get him from the Chicago Fire and how it feels like it, it was a very high high risk, high reward situation because, you know, while Mihajevic had a breakout season, uh, we don't know if that's going to continue into the se second year and it turns out that it definitely continued the second year and that some and that eventually uh they sell him off for a big profit the same goes with alistair johnston because you know i will say that at least with alistair johnston he's all uh he he has already been proven to be a player that ha has a lot lot of potential and even some might consider probably the one of the best fullbacks in this league so you know, with them getting getting them uh, from Nashville was kind of, in some way, kind of surprising in Nashville cases because I thought Nashville would, would have just kept him and, of course, able, able to sell him, him off and get that profit. I mean, the good news for Nashville is that at least they do get some sell-on fees because when they uh, decided to trade Alistair Johnston to Montreal, they did include the clause that there is going to be a sell-on fees. But, again, if you're in Nashville, you'll be a little bit disappointed the fact that, you know, you could have got, got the outright transfer instead of just just maybe 10 or 15 percent of it but nevertheless less what a player Alistair Johnston is uh breaked into the Canadian national team and and also become a regular to a way where he was regularly appearing for the Canadian national team in the World Cup and it was no surprise that Mont Montreal was gonna, gonna gonna get a profit out of him though I, I think in some way it was kind of a little bit sooner than I thought I thought maybe they will wait till next next summer or even in the next winter transfer window but boom They've already got a big profit out, out of him now joining joining uh, Celtic in the Scottish League. Now, uh, we move on to New England. And this one is a pretty easy. And, and speaking of the, the first name, Georgie, uh, I'm going to go with, uh, with Georgie Petrovich, the goalkeeper for the New England Revolution, who arguably really should have been in the the goalkeeper of the year contention in fact i think he was in in that con contention uh for for that but yeah i mean george g petrovich what a player he is and i i would say that he he some might even say that he got robbed in terms of newcomer of the year i mean so this is where it's kind of where people have said well as much as tiago amada had a good good second half of the season so is georgie petrovich and especially with him just kind of came into the league and a guy that that you know there was a lot of question is he going to be be the guy that could be be a replacement for Matt Turner well not only the fact that he was a replacement for Matt Turner but I mean I don't want to say say that you know you know uh, Petrovic is, is even better than what Matt Matt Turner was because you know what Matt Turner has done for New England has been incredible and that you know it has really guided him to to be be now the starting goalkeeper for the U.S. men's national team during the World Cup, but that's nothing to take away from Petrovic. Like, I would say they're almost around the same lo level of uh, of the way that he's been performing. That That's saying so something for, for this New England team, the fact that, again, there was a lot of concern. What are they going... Once Matt Turner does move on, can they find another decent goalkeeper there? And they, they, they really hit the, the, the luck of the draw with with getting getting Petrovic, a guy that has, has been, been, I think, considered to be the top five or even the top three goalkeeper in this league uh but now we move on to orlando city and you know for orlando they throughout last off season they definitely had a couple of busts but one player that wasn't a bust was facundo torres and again this was another player that you know i i thought la last season kind of got off to a bit of a slow start didn't really kind of live up to the the amount that orlando has and it turns out that was the, that 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 kind of statement didn't last as the season goes along. I mean, he was a, a pivotal kind of kind of focal point for this Orlando City team, and now it's kind of worth every last penny that they, of course, got got him uh, from last off season. And now there's even rumor that there there could be some club that is looking to try to get him. So yeah, Facundo the Torres, uh, I think he is by far the best signing uh, for for Orlando City for last season. 
But now we move on to the the Eastern Conference champion, the Philadelphia Union. And this was a tough one because, you know, I want to put, put Michael Uru on there because Uru had a, had a, had a decent se season too. And the same goes with Re Julian Carranza and that, yeah, if, if I had to, to, to pick, I would say Julian Carranza just because of the fact that the, the amount that the Union was able to get for a Carranza. Uh, from Inter Miami and just the absolute steal that they they got from this deal. Yeah, I mean it, it was it, it's it maybe is the difference in terms of me deciding which player from the Union I'm gonna say it's the be best signing because again you know both Carranza and Root both of them ha ha had almost a similar incredible season for this Union team, but I just gotta go with Car Carranza just because of, of the absolute steal and that I think it's gonna go down as one of the biggest steal and one of the most lopsided side of trade we, we've see, seen uh, in MLS history and that you know I'm pretty sure Inter Miami are, are really regret grading that they didn't ask the price higher because just for 500,000 general allocation money for a guy that ha has has the journey they just changed his career for the union as I, I was kind of predicted would happen uh yeah I mean easily the best signing for the union last season and now moving on to Toronto FC and again this is another one where I had two players that I could have chose. I could have chose uh, Brendan Desky. I could have chose Insigne. But you know what? In the end, uh, I put the end here in Lorenzo. But yeah, I'm going to go with Lorenzo Insigne. I mean, Insigne, uh, he definitely live, live up to, to every bit of the hype. And the fact that, you know, they, TFC, they, they, they mentioned how he... he he is going to be, be a guy that will cha change this attack. And along with Bernadeschi, they they really changed this TFC attack. Especially uh, when they came into the league for the first time. They put on an absolute boot show. So, again, I wish I could have chose both of them. So, I'll just go with the, the bigger name in, in Insignia here. But that's nothing to to go against Bernadeschi, who also had a, a decent season. And I can't wait to see how, how that's going to work out. And those two tangent is going to do because we know that this TFC team is pretty lock and lo loaded on the attack. If they can maybe just fix that defense a little bit, I think this team could could be be a contender again. But there you have it. That is pretty much it in terms of. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I just realized I forgot about the two New York te team here. Uh, so let's let's uh, actually backtrack. We're gonna go with NYCFC next. It's got to be Gabriel per Pereira, and in fact, I'm just gonna put the the, the red balls. Two, um, and that of course is Lewis Morgan. So we start with the 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 team in blue that is NYCFC and Gabriel Pereira. I mean that that should be no no discussion. I mean he he is a guy that again NYCFC has ha, has been hitting slam dunk in term terms of finding these these good talent, and that we mentioned the CFG group has has certainly one of of the be best scouting network, and they definitely got got a guy that turns out to be be a really Good player and another player that that NYCFC can eventually develop and potentially sell them for a big amount. And then of course for the the Red Bulls and getting Lewis Morgan. I mean, just see what I said about about uh, Julian Carranza with the Philadelphia Union. And again for Inter Miami, it has to suck the fact that you s saw two. I mean, in Lewis Morgan case, at least he was he was decent, which is why it was kind of surprised that Inter Miami decided to let let him go. And that yeah, I, I think they they may. Be regretting that because Morgan was very good for this this Red Bulls team, one of the more pitiful attackers so far far for this Red Bulls team last season. But yeah, there you have it. Uh, let me see. Did I forget anybody? No, I I I did not. But either way, hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, make sure you guys like, smash the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments below again. What do you think of this list? Do you think there are some players that 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 should be replaced on this list? But yeah, hope you guys enjoy this video, and I will see you guys next time.